So, um, as I was introduced, I was talking about myself, and um, the TEDx lecture said, not talking about yourself, talking about an idea. And Memo Factor, um, that's something, it's uh, something scientific and sociological. Um, memes are the cultural genes, like ideas spread in genetics, the information which is transmitted by the genes in I, um, culture, these are ideas. And um, yeah, I have a profession, of course, as a philosopher, I have to earn my money with philosophy, because I was asked, how do you earn your money? And I said, yeah, as a philosopher. And uh, philosophers are licensed to thrill with their ideas, so we might use strange ideas and theories. And I'm talking about, can I get my slides, please? And the clicker. Oh, da war was. Hmm? Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Das geht von der Netto-Zeit an, ne? I'm going to talk about something which is partly my profession and my passion, architecture. And a way of regarding architecture, maybe like you, you will use my light glasses afterwards, um, aesthetic sustainability or the art of doing business formerly known as architecture, like um, renaming like prints. Huh? And um, as you said during a lecture about these music performances, um, you cannot dance, quoting Zappa, you cannot dance architecture, but uh, sometimes architecture is regarded as frozen music. That's a saying of Goethe. <laughs> and I want to start as well that not everything which is built is architecture. Um, it is art. It is applied art, but not art for art's sake. It is art for business sake, but for economy. And you see Da Vinci's painting, now on a coin, the Italian version of the euro, a currency. Money is an ideal medium to exchange ideas with goods. That's another cultural invention we had. And what Da Vinci was showing in this image is the circle as the natural forms and the square as the cultural forms, a form which we never find in nature. But humans have created their second nature. Architecture can be regarded as our third skin. We have our natural skin, second skin is clothing, third skin is architecture. And for me, architecture begins in the very moment people not only entered the caves, but they did paintings on the wall. They didn't use the caves for shelter, they did it for some cultural things. They prepared something as a group which formed their group, not only because of the need, but because they wanted to. You can regard humans either as creatures or creators, but we are both. Our na second nature is culture, so are we creating creatures? We have a positive, productive nature. That is our fate. And at the end of the day, everything starts with this possibility, with this potential as a human resource. And architecture is culture. Uh, Vitruvian, the guy, Da Vinci was illustrating are the oldest books we have in the European tradition about architecture. Ten books about architecture, which everyone knows. Renaissance thinking, the rebirth of humans. And as it started in architecture, maybe our ancestors have just climbed down from the trees with lots of hairs on their skin. And now you can regard humans either as animals, which have the need for shelter, or we have lost our fur, our hairs, because we're living in houses. I am more subscribing to the second point of view. It's like about the glasses, you know, um, half full, half empty. So I see us as create, creating creatures. And so culture means cultivating. You can regard culture as something, it's the way we do the things. But culture is cultivating, it's nobilitating, it is refinement of the human nature to a higher state. So every generation has a new step, so we are all standing as dwarfs on the shoulders of giants. These are our ancestors before us. And um, so we have a totally different point of view, we profit from that. And uh, as you might have, rem or you might remember, aesthetic is not about beauty. In philosophy, aesthetic is the science of the central perception of the world. The opposite of aesthetic is not ugliness. 
the opposite of aesthetic is unesthetic. So you know that from medical context. You can easily check that if you put your finger on the shoulder of your neighbor. Do it, please. If you, no, leave it there. Leave it there. The human brain is only triggered by differences. If you do that for 30 seconds or for 30 minutes, you won't feel the finger anymore. Hmm? You know that phenomena. If you do that in an irregular rhythm, you will get hit by your neighbor. No? <laughs> so our senses are not mechanically imaging the world. This is a big mistake from the mechanical age. You know, if we see white in a um, natural surrounding, our eyes, our brain, produce white as a productive um, imagination of our brains. I once had the experience at home when they did some construction where they were sheltering the windows with green plastics. So I woke up, I went around my house, everything looked normal after a few minutes. I was working maybe an hour, took breakfast, and then I went outside. You know what happened? I've seen the world in pink, the complementary contrast to green. And I was asking my wife, hey, what did you do in the coffee? <laughs> They are not about supposed to taking drugs at the morning, huh? so just joking. <laughs> so culture is the result of architecture as a human tradition. It's the most natural human doing. And usually, um, you know, what is a real challenge, it's not about speaking architecture here, but once I was invited for the German Association of Engineers talking about design. Sometimes I'm talking, I'm teaching design. And you know, these guys are quite strange. And I said, yeah, we have a common anchor The first engineer in European history was Da Vinci. And they looked at me, okay, I have to believe this guy. And usually one is said, saying, Walter Gropius, the first director of the Bauhaus, has said, architecture begins where engineering ends. So architecture has to be qualified by something. It's not everything which is man-made and visible in the outside. So, and Vitruve as well has said, Architecture is the mother of all arts, the metrics, huh? like the movie and uh, like political protests. I was thinking of Vivian Vendetta and uh, Guy Fox. Anyway, the result of architecture, in English it's much better to be expressed than in German, is a building. But building as a gerund is all already a doing. So it's a process, it's a verb, it's a thing we do. We do it's a um, productive process. And you can illustrate that easily the attitude is expressed in architecture. If you are literate in architecture, if you can read the architecture, you can really read what kind of anthropology the people had who were building this thing. An easy example for that, you can ask three craftsmen building a wall. You ask the first one, what are you doing there? He will say, I'm combining bricks. Okay, craftsman. Then you ask the second one, what are you doing there? Hmm, I'm earning my living. Okay, he's earning his living, he has to work something. And the third one, what are you doing? Oh, I'm building the cathedral for the praise of God by humans. Now you understand the difference in an attitude, and that is all about what is, could be achieved by the real approach towards architecture. Le Corbusier, a former painter by German <clears throat> actual standards, not an architect, because he never studied, or finished his university, like Walter Gropius, Mies van der Rohe, Peter Behrens, and all these famous German architects were not, would not be architects by German standards today. Interesting thing. Hmm? Um, said once that architecture is much more a state of mind than a profession. Usually the architect, and I would, if I'm going to ask you, tell me 10 contemporary worldwide architects or 10 German architects, I would make a bet that nobody would know them. I'm not going to insult you. It's not part of the German culture. It's not part of the public education. We learn literature, we learn music, we learn painting. We do not learn sculpture, the first spatial art, and, and we absolutely do not learn architecture as well as dwelling, the way we live in houses. Um, yeah. Shrink your arms, please. Now the other way around. Please. 
you know, that's what psychologists... <laughs> Okay, no, take the groove. Um, that's what psychologists call a habit. And you know, what are we doing with the houses? We are inhabiting our houses. There is no natural way of dwelling or inhabiting a house. It's a learned but not reflected way. For example, in Scandinavian countries, children do learn in school living and dwelling in houses. They learn design principles, not for aesthetic, not for designing, but creating the world around them by the principles of design, which is just applying architectural thinking to object. Space is not a volume, is nothing which could be measured, measured objective. You know, I studied physics, so space as well is a relative thing <laughs> with time and all this stuff. But what you see there is an imagination of your brain, and it will start to jump. You don't see where's the front and where's the back. Space architecture is not about building walls. Space or architecture is what's happening, possible, between the walls and the roof and the ceiling. And you know, um, if you show images like this or an empty space, uh, I would say political correct, culturally challenged persons, accountants, Masters of Business Administrations, and so on. <coughs> they don't, what, what do you guess, what do they see? Nothing. <laughs> exactly like that. A creative would see their chances, they see challenges. And we can learn from the European tradition from one word, which is oikos. And this term, which is a very big verbal container for a concept, means it's the house, the household, the family, the exchange processes, the father, the children, the mother, and everything around in the house, which we don't have a um, substitute in the German language. Everything, someone's calling me, um, everything is termed in that. This concept is the birth of the words we knew, n now use in our language economy, ecology, and everything. But it's divided in all these special faculties. Specialization is nothing in architecture. Architects are usually regarded as generalists, or they are blamed for the mistakes of technical planners, um, <coughs> or for the stupid ideas of politicians like friends of mine happening now in Hamburg and in Duisburg. Economists always think in one dimension. Price is an absolute um, straight um, number, and it has only one dimension. Sustainability, in a real manner, addresses lots of senses. And in the English language, we have adapted that in German as well now, something makes sense. So it's logical and emotionally coherent. It addresses both things. There's no contradiction between that. And if you have more dimensions, like in space, at least three geometrical and one in time, so architecture, even in business terms, in economical terms, is addressed towards the future. You have 25 years um, of right of time for a building in economic context. So it's always oriented towards the future. It's always strategy in business. So quality creates value. And by saying with Oscar Wilde, you can say, Okay, um, cynists know the price of everything but the value of nothing. So it's exactly what is the possibilities if you have more dimensions, you have more added value, a term from economy which gives much more um, possible exchange places with different people. That can be aesthetics in all senses. It makes sense. Spaces like this, a form of monastery, shape behavior. And I was talking a few minutes ago with one of the participants about the behavior. Usually, if you have not that an interesting event like this, usually the first row stay is empty. And I have given an example from a Finnish architect who built the opera house here, Alva Alto. And as an architect, with the um, attitude of a total work of art, he has not only created the shelter, but the landscape around and the furniture. And you know how Ar Alva Alto got around this group psychology behavior, he uh, did three different kinds of chairs in the room. In the first row, the one with armrests and cushions. 
And the second, third, in the middle, the same chairs without armrests and without cushions, and in the back only stools with three legs. You know, um, comfort uh, fights <coughs> uh, psychological behaviors. So these possibles are political, political things. And people are always talking about social responsibility, but there's a cultural responsibility. And the same term applies in German. Responsibility requires logically a request. Who's asking for the architectural quality in our political processes? Where are the architectural public things discussed in our newspapers? I don't think anywhere. And if they are discussed, only architects are blamed for mistakes of politicians and if something goes wrong. It is always about architectural context, so architecture, so everything around. You can even go wider, a city in a country, a country on a continent, a continent um, on the planet, and the planet in the universe. Why I'm talking about that, the orientation, the direction toward the east, the natural light, the seasons, we all forgot in modernism, nobody's thinking about the energy we can get from natural light, the connection to nature, and what we can learn out of that. What I can invite you only is, and we are in a region which profits very much from architecture. Um, I'm living on Sofa Ein, a UNESCO World Cultural Heritage, not only a mine, which is usually regarded as a World Cultural Heritage for mining. But it is a World Cultural, the UNESCO has 10 criteria for cultural heritages. Um, two of them have been applied to Sofa Ein. One is architecture, the other is urban design outstanding m principles of modern architecture applied to a whole industrial complex, a total work of art. That is the qualification. And if you take in consideration, for example, sustainability in this context, this was corporate architecture, an idea coined 1907 by Peter Behrens, um, the inventor of corporate identity. He made it in a value chain, so from the production hall to the product, the advertisement, the point of sale, everything was designed recognizable so that you have a company. The same principles were applied to Zofaein, one of the architects is a pupil of Peter Behrens. And this architecture was built for 50 years only because they knew coal is not a new renewable resource like um, human imagination is an, is an unlimited resource which renews itself always by triggers. And so it should have been torn down after 50 years. It only survived because we had a very brave minister and the qualification for the protection as a monument was the architecture. So you can now say as a social return on invest in architecture, you got a massive um, return on invest. So the sustainability of this corporate architecture, the quality gives every euro which is earned today, every job which is created there, the reason for existing, otherwise it would have, would have been realized down. Or I'll just see the ThyssenKrupp headquarter and the other way around. So, a picture tells you more than 1,000 words, and I nearly missed all my time. Um, in the English language, you know, all the Apple users know that maybe there's always the connotation of I and I as yourself. You know that when you look in the mirror, most people say if you're not, um, te not used to, um, with the paintings of René Magritte, the Belgian surrealist, if you ask them what do you see in the mirror, they say, oh, myself. No, you see an image of yourself. You have this identification and with an eye again. And it's from the past. It is, uh, oh, you can get younger or older. Huh? So the speed of light is fast but not unlimited um, or instant. So if you get closer to the mirror, you get younger. Huh? Um, so I hope you can see that now a little bit in the way I see the things, a little bit. And you can ask around for architectural qualities. You can study that. And what Corbusier was saying, that is the key. I can only show you the doors. Passing and going through the doors, you have to go yourself and you can do something for the quality, because an architect is always asking for limitations in the design process, because for him, these are chances to create something better. The more you integrate, the higher is the quality in architecture. Always integration, not simply addition. And at the end of the day, 
Um, someone I had the pleasure to talk on another conference, Karim Rashid, has written a manifesto. He's an industrial designer, and his favorite color is pink. <laughs> you should see his products. Um, but <laughs> I like his saying very much, and the type is absolutely cool. Um, it is a human need. The humans have a need for the sublime and for the orientation, like every religious building around the world is oriented towards orientation meets directed towards east sunrise like i got blinded from the light now um, and so beauty as the perception of well feeling by your taste is a feeling which every human needs good feelings good vibrations that can be created by the surrounding and uh, as architecture is a universal language instead of verbal language, I used one final beautiful flower which has a name in every language which is the same. Forget me not. Thanks a lot. <laughs>